What do you think, Toby? They're pretty adorable, aren't they? When I set out the eggs like this, I feel like it's such an amazing moment because there's so much potential contained in all of these eggs. I know not every single egg is gonna turn into a gosling, but many of them will, and that potential just is so exciting to me. Once I have all the eggs in the trays, it's time to load them up into the incubator. The model of incubator I have is the Brinzy 380 Easy incubator. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but it's useful. It does the 90 eggs that I'm about to incubate. What's also nice nice is it'll rotate and turn the eggs automatically as needed. The program up top here will also do automatic cooling. So once a day, it'll rest the eggs for an hour, which is what you need to do to make sure your goose eggs hatch. And then actually the new addition I have for this year is I ponied up the extra money and bought the humidity pump. This will regulate the amount of water inside the incubator. That way I can ensure that there's the proper humidity at all times. Each one of these plates will hold two of those egg trays as I slide them in there. So let's start loading up the eggs, huh? This year I'm doing all my hatching inside the attic. I'm finding that it's easier to regulate the temperature controls in this room specifically. I think the three biggest issues I had with my hatching last year was number one, I wasn't properly storing the eggs. Number two, I was having my humidity levels fluctuate too much. And then number three, my room temperatures were also fluctuating too much. By doing it here, by adding the incubator humidity controls and by having a very focused way of how I've stored my eggs up to this point. I'm really hoping I can improve my hatching rates. So yeah, take a look inside there. It's 90 eggs inside the incubator. I'm actually leaving this bottom floor open because unfortunately I wouldn't be able to automatically turn the eggs if I tried to put them down there, but I could fit another 30 in here if I tried. And really now all I have to do is just be patient and wait What's happening over the next few days is that the eggs are gonna set. That means that the fertilized egg is gonna start to develop an embryo. And while some people like to candle all the time, I actually like to candle or check on my eggs on a very limited basis. So I'll check back in in about 10 days and we'll see how our little eggs are doing. So it's actually day 15 and I just concluded doing my check of the eggs. Some folks will go crazy with candling every single day. I really only do it once or twice the entire hatch. And this was actually the first time I got around to doing it. When you're candling an egg, what you're doing is essentially taking like a flashlight or I have actually this specialized egg candler and you're putting it to the eggshell, looking inside to see development, looking inside to see what's happening with the air sac, seeing veins, seeing the embryo form and grow and really turn into a baby bird. Because we're at day 15, we're essentially at the halfway mark here. And so far the development I'm seeing out of most of these eggs is outstanding. In fact, I only had to take a half dozen out of 90 eggs. About 7% of them weren't viable. So to have more than 90% of those eggs in inside the incubator doing well and looking like they're developing, that's a really good sign. Of course, that doesn't mean I should be counting my geese before they hatch, but I'm feeling really good with what's going on here. You know, one of the biggest changes I made so far this year with hatching has been I added this humidity pump to the incubator. See what this does is it sets them back into motion here and keeps the eggs rotating. You know, again, this incubator does automatic rotation, does automatic cooling, manages your humidity level, or at least tells you your humidity level. It should be at about 55% because I opened it up, to, it dropped down to 45. So the humidity pump is going and it's pumping water into the water reservoir that's up here. And so it's gonna increase the humidity so that these eggs get back up to the appropriate 55 degrees and 99.4 on the temp that I should be seeing. And so far this has been really easy to do too. You know, basically what happens is I come up here once a day, I check to make sure everything's developing properly. I add additional water to the humidity pump just to make sure that doesn't run out. If I was gonna complain about anything with this humidity pump, it's just that it doesn't hold a lot of water and I really do only get about 24 hours out of it. I would love it if they had a bigger reservoir where I could put like, I don't know, two or three days worth of water in there. I could probably actually build one myself, but that'll be something I do for the future. But so far at the midpoint, it looks like everything is doing really well. So I'm very excited with what's happening here with the hatch. Welcome to the world, little ones. So I went to bed last night and I noticed a couple eggs cracking and I woke up this morning and we have a few surprises. That's right, it looks like the little baby goslings have started to hatch. There seems to be hatching activity happening on all levels. You see a couple of these ones that have just hatched up top. You see a couple have already hatched up here and they've gone down to the bottom level. You see like an egg like this one right here that's just started to pit. 
but uh, the little gosling hasn't emerged yet. Because goslings, as well as ducklings or chicks, can spend a couple of days without food or water because they're just sort of going through that natural process of being acclimated to the world and they've already been fed from the egg that they were hatched in, I'm gonna leave my birds in here for at least this entire day. One hatching mistake that I've made in the past that I've learned my lesson from very well at this point is I used to like open the incubator constantly and what that would do would be it would wreak havoc on the humidity inside the incubator. Now, with this incubator and how it's set up, as well as this special humidity control pump that we have attached to it, I could easily go two days without even opening this thing, and so that's pretty much what I'll do. My plan will be to just have these little ones hatch out, or as many of them hatch out as possible, and open it once, probably tomorrow morning, and take the ones that have hatched out and set them in a brooder, and then give the ones that haven't yet hatched a chance to continue to work, creating the best possible odds for hatching as many goslings as possible. So it's now a few hours later and many more goslings have hatched. If I was going to guess in terms of how many have actually hatched right here, I would say probably in the neighborhood of about 16 or so that are fully out. And there's probably about another dozen eggs that are still in mid hatching cycle. Six hours or so, seven hours since the last time I recorded a video about this hatch. I'm going to let them stay in there. I will probably leave them in there until at least tomorrow morning. But so far so good and I'm very excited. Would you look at these little guys? They are adorable. Can't wait to get them in the brooder. Hey little one, welcome to the world. So basically what I'm finding is they will hatch and then they work their way down to the bottom layer. And that's when they're kind of ready to run. This one looks like he's about to go join his brothers and sisters. It's now much later in the day and I'm getting ready to go to bed, but it looks like Gosling Hatch so far continues to be a success. Several more eggs are pipped, several more eggs are hatching. And so my plan is to just continue doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna let them continue to hatch out. I'm gonna keep them in the incubator. I have yet to open the incubator since I went on lockdown two days ago. So tomorrow morning, I'll take a big chunk of these guys outside, out into the brooder for their first time. I'll still keep the incubator going. I'll still let the ones that are hatching continue to try to hatch. This process will probably stretch on for a couple of days, but I'm very curious to see what happens when I wake up tomorrow morning. So it's now been nearly 36 hours since the first gosling hatched. These guys are active and ready to go, so I'm gonna bring them outside to the brooder. I'm gonna do this kind of quickly so that as there are still a couple goslings that are in the middle of hatching, they don't get too dehydrated. Two more hiding way, way in the back there. Hey, little guy. I always find that super stressful. Let's get him outside. It's okay, little guys. Now, Molly girl, you know you're not allowed to play with these things, right? Ginny or Molly would eat these things in a heartbeat. Okay, Toby dog. Got some new animals for you to watch over. Would you like to say hello? Yeah, guys, this is your Uncle Toby. All right, guys, welcome to your new home for the next month and a half or so. Hey, little ones. You like your new setup? Aw. <laughs> this one still has a little bit of a helmet on. This one you might have splayed legs. You do. I'm gonna have to try to fix that. So by my count, we've got 24 little baby goslings here, and they are looking absolutely adorable. You can see they're super curious and active at this point. I feel like this is actually one of the advantages too of leaving them in the incubator just a little bit longer. It's okay, Toby Dog, you can say hello. <laughs> I know, they're new little babies on the farm. Aren't they adorable? So most of them seem very healthy. I do have this one here that has 
its leg is kind of all splayed out like that. Since I'm catching it extremely early, I'm gonna take a moment and try to create a little brace so that we can correct this for this little one. Because otherwise it seems like a very healthy gosling. Looks like some of the adult geese are very curious about what's going on here as well. And one funny thing about Toby, he is very protective of the goslings. This is like his favorite spot to camp out when all the baby birds live right inside here. So spraddle leg is an ailment that can affect ducklings, goslings, chicks. Usually it occurs when they're too young and they're on too smooth of a surface and they can't get good grip with their legs and their leg joints get kind of out of whack. If I had to guess what went wrong with this one, I don't know, maybe because he was on the bottom of the incubator, like that flat surface maybe created problems for them. I can only think of one other occurrence where this has happened right out of the incubator just like that. And the gosling that happened to was one that had a real problem with failure to thrive which happens from time to time with goslings in general. This gosling seems large and healthy, so I'm hoping that I can correct it really quickly right here. There's two ways you can do it. Some people will use band-aids. I actually prefer a more rigid piece of plastic to do it. Like sometimes you can use a straw, but I don't like straws because they're a little too sharp. What I've found that actually works the best is the insulator for a electric fence. I actually just cut two different lengths to the right size, and what I'm gonna do is take this rubber band and just thread it on through like this. And so what I'm gonna have to do is then put it on its legs so that it basically hobbles its legs just like this so that they can't go out to the side and it keeps them close. Hopefully this corrects itself in a couple of days. I know Ginny, you are so curious with these goslings but I can't let you anywhere near them. Sorry, sweetie. Okay, now that I've got the properly sized elastic band, let's try this. Let's see how this suits your little one. Try to get around your other foot. Doesn't work unless it's on both feet. There we go. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, you're able to move around already better. I bet you in a couple hours he's gonna be like good as new. And so for the folks who are wondering about the specifics of how I brood my baby birds, I use the brooder plates instead of a heat lamp. The one lamp you see in there is actually like a reptile ceramic heating element. It's not like a light bulb lamp. I do that because it has a much lower risk of fire. I've been using this for brooding for a couple of years now and it works great. As far as feed goes, it's actually just regular old chick starter that I mix with some brewer's yeast so that they get the appropriate levels of niacin. The bedding is just basically pine shavings, but I also put a bed of straw underneath it just to uh, be extra absorbent. For the first week or so, this brooder won't get messy at all, but as time goes on, I'm gonna have to change it really frequently to keep the birds clean. The waterers I'm using are actually feeding trays. I like to use these types of waterers for about the first week of the baby birds' lives because it keeps them from making too much of a mess. I'll add a drainage tub and a bigger waterer when they get older because they'll start going through water much faster. But part of brooding ducklings and goslings is that if you can manage their water situation, everything else is gonna make your life easier. I'm really looking forward to seeing how many more of the goslings hatch and I'll give you a total in the next video. If you want more specifics on how to brood, take a look at that first video or you can take a look at the second video and see the first time we ever did a gosling hatch and some of the mistakes we made and how we've improved and learned over the last couple of years. Thanks for watching everybody.